Well, good Monday morning here on, uh, this is Monday, March 30th. Hi, Monday, March 30th, and good morning to you after a beautiful weekend. It's supposed to be a beautiful day here in uh, Leader in, uh, today, which is a uh, yeah, something to uh, celebrate. Spring seems to be here, so that helps to make uh, everything flow a little easier. Uh, life seem a little uh, nicer and brighter when the sun is shining, when it's warm, you can be outside enjoying God's good creation. And so we are continuing uh, together to look at uh, the Psalms of Ascent, these uh, uh, group of Psalms that God's people used to center themselves, to uh, remind themselves of their hope in their God. We're using that as a way of grounding ourselves, centering ourselves, uh, beginning each morning here together. We'll look at a psalm, we'll think about it, we'll reflect on it, we'll listen for God's uh, word to us before we carry on with our day. Some of us I know have already started our days, uh, but we'll uh, carry on, begin our days. And we do that uh, mindful of whose we are. Uh, we do that in the very name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We've been sharing uh, each day as well a, a prayer of the day. And these are uh, ancient prayers that the church have prayed for for many, many years. So it's always a, a good helpful for me to enter into these prayers and, and know that people have prayed them for, for hundreds, if not thousands of years uh, together, these same prayers. So would you pray with me today, this prayer of the day? Lord Jesus Christ, in the garden of Gethsemane, you suffered the agony of drinking from the cup of your father's wrath against our sin and being betrayed by a kiss from one of your own. Give us strength to remain awake as we now wait and watch for your coming again, knowing that the Father's wrath against us has been satisfied by your death and vindicating resurrection. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So our psalm for today is going to be Psalm 129, uh, just a handful of more psalms to uh, work through, to think through here right, in these psalms of ascent over the next few days. <clears throat> but today we hear Psalm 129, and as you listen to it, again, reflect, uh, listen, pay attention to what you sense God speaking uh, through his spirit to your heart, to your very lives uh, today. Uh, you'll note as you hear these words, as you follow along in, in your own Bible, perhaps always a good thing to have open, you'll note that this psalm is different in, in content, different in language than the other psalms that we've encountered. And so I, even though it may be somewhat unsettling, I encourage you to sit with it, to listen, to pay attention to what God is speaking, what God has to say to us today. Psalm 129. They have greatly oppressed me from my youth. Let Israel say they have greatly oppressed me from my youth, but they have not gained the victory over me. Plowmen have plowed my back and made their furrows long, but the Lord is righteous. He has cut me free from the cords of the wicked. May all who hate Zion be turned back in shame. May they be like grass on the roof which withers before it can grow. With it, the reaper cannot fill his hands, nor the one who gathers his arms, gathers, fills his arms. May those who pass by not say, the blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. So like I said, unsettling, uh, maybe a more unsettling psalm than we're used to to reading or hearing or spending time with. I'm going to read it one more time here and share some of my own thoughts, my own reflections on it. Psalm 129. They have greatly oppressed me from my youth. Let Israel say they have greatly oppressed me from my youth, but they have not gained the victory over me. 
Plowmen have plowed my back and made their furrows long. But the Lord is righteous. He has cut me free from the cords of the wicked. May all who hate Zion be turned back in shame. May they be like grass on the roof, which withers before it can grow. With it, the reaper cannot fill his hands, nor the one who gathers fill his arms. May those who pass by not say, the blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. And so yeah, these are, uh, this psalm is, is one of the, the many psalms uh, in, in our Bible that are classified as a psalm of lament, uh, crying out, uh, crying out to God. And they're, they're kind of unsettling because we, especially in, in North America, we in the West, we like happy endings. We like nice resolved stories. That's what we look for in movies and TV shows. Uh, when, when the plot doesn't end nicely or end how we think it does, we're troubled by that. Some of that trouble draws us back into the story, uh, you know, makes us enter into it, uh, you know, make us want it a little bit more. But but there's something unsettling in us when there's not a nice, neat bow. You know, everybody uh, lives happily ever after at the end. And that's that's some of the the trouble that that we have with this psalm because it's not a nice, neat, you know, pretty thing. You know, these people were being mean to me. I. This is God's people talking about being in exile, being uh, cast out of their land, being oppressed. It's not a nice neat bow saying these people were being mean to me, but now all is well, all is happy. Instead, this is a psalm that embodies the disappointment, the pain, the, the heartache, the, the suffering of God's people. It says they've, they've oppressed me from, from my youth. Uh, they've not gained the victory over me. The last uh, four verses of, of this psalm really is, is almost a, a words of curse saying, God, let what they've done to me be done to them. And it's, it's unsettling because, again, we like the nice, neat, happy endings where all is well. I, you know, kind of the happy, clappy type of a, a mentality or, or message or story. But what I love about this psalm, and, and actually the, the one we'll look at tomorrow, Psalm 130, is that it's not a nice, neat, happy, pretty bow on it. In fact, this reveals the, raw, the rawness of our humanity, the pain, the struggle, the agony, the heartache. What I love about this psalm is, and, and all the other psalms of lament, is that it shows us that it's okay to be human. It's okay to, to have emotions. It's okay to have uh, feelings that aren't just happy, that aren't just good. It's okay to, be, to express our, our anger, our disappointment, our heartache, our frustration. That's a good reminder for us today that it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to not be okay, to admit that we're struggling, to admit that life isn't all that we had hoped it would be. It's okay to embrace those very human emotions. But stuck right in the middle of this psalm is the point that draws us back. It doesn't leave us totally, you know, wallowing in self-misery and, and complaining and grumbling. Verse 4 says, But the Lord is righteous. He has cut me free from the cords of the wicked. And it's that reminder that draws us back that even when life is bad, even when, when you know, our, our life is not what we want it to be, that even then God is good. Even then God is righteous. Even then, God brings salvation and deliverance and makes a way forward. So the psalm encourages me, reminds me, it's okay to not be okay. Because God is still there. God is still making a way. Even in our lives that aren't 
okay. God is still there. God is still righteous. God is still setting us free. God is still working his salvation and life in us. So I want you to hear that today. It's okay not to be okay. But in those moments to remember God's goodness, God's righteousness, God is still with us. God is still making a way forward for us. And so with that in mind this morning, would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have created us to have emotion, that you've created us not just to be some flat or static a robot, but that you've created us to experience the, the joys, the wonder of, of life, and also some of the, the depths and the lows. Lord, we don't want to stay in those, those depths, those lows, any longer than we have to. But, but when we experience those, may we be reminded that you are still with us, that you are still righteous, you are still good, you are still making a way, setting us free, leading us into life. Lord, I pray that we would embrace all of life, the good and the bad, the, the highs and the, the lows, and that in, in all of life, we would be reminded that you are our God, that you are with us. You are working in our hearts and our lives. Remind each and every one of us of that today, in the very way that, that we need it. May you speak your words of comfort, your presence, your healing, your hope, to us as we ever fix our eyes on you on the cross on our our way forward our way forward in life and hope with you lord jesus we thank you for making a way for inviting us to life with you through your death on the cross we do pray that we would, would be ready watching eager for you that we would make you known in our lives and all that we say, do, think, how we act, that we'd honor and glorify you, Lord Jesus. For it's in your name that we are, are gathered, it's in your name that we have belonging, and it's in, in your powerful name that we pray this prayer that you've taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So as we go out as God's people here today, uh, we're reminded that we're sent out in his power and his strength. We're sent out to be his ambassadors, his people, uh, to, to proclaim him, to declare him. In, in all that we do think and say. And so we receive his blessing over us this morning. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. So thanks for watching again this morning. We'll be back again at 8.30 tomorrow morning. Uh, look at another Psalm of Lament, Psalm 130, together tomorrow. Uh, God's blessing on your day today. Enjoy the beautiful spring weather today. We'll see you tomorrow.